I've recently been having a problem with my iMac 21 and a half inch where the second monitor keeps flashing on and off and that causes the main Mac screen also to flash on and off but eventually after much cajoling uh, it will settle down and work properly as a second monitor again. At first I thought it was the iMac. It is 10 years old and it does get worked hard and I thought well maybe it's coming to the end of its life and I just need to replace it. So I did some testing and I plugged some of my other external screens that I have into the iMac and they all worked perfectly. So I thought well what could make my external monitor sometimes work, sometimes not, become a bit intermittent and switch on and off. And anyone who's dealt with switch mode power supplies, especially the cheap and cheerful commodity ones that get shipped with these uh, particular LG monitors will probably know exactly where this is going. And this is the offending article. This is what I'll be testing today and most likely repairing today. So the first test I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug it into the mains and I'm going to measure its voltage. Now this is a 19 volt power supply, uh, one and a half amps. So let's get it plugged in and uh, just measure what it's outputting. Okay, so that's plugged in. Let's get my multimeter and let's measure the output of that connector. So let's put that on there, that on there. 19 and a half volts. Well, that looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks okay, but that's because it's got no load on it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to plug it into my DC load and then slowly crank up the load on it until it inevitably starts to drop. So what will have happened is the smoothing capacitor inside that power supply will probably have become swollen and dried out and uh, thus the power supply falls out of regulation under load. And this is what's happening with the monitor. You know, as soon as it tries to initialize on the Mac, it pulls more current, which pulls the voltage down, which causes it to reboot. Repeat until annoyed. So let's get this tested on the BK Precision digital load. So we're going to start with no load. And at the moment it's showing 19.17 volts. And we're just going to just increase the load in increments of 100 milliamps and uh, just watch as I'm sure it plummets to uh, completely the wrong voltage. So let's just uh, put 100 milliamps on that. There we go. Okay, seems all right at the moment. Let's wind it up a little bit more. Let's put 300 on already starting to drop. Now this uh, power supply is rated for 1.3 amps, so I hate to uh, think what it's going to be like at, at that load, but let's, um, let's double it to 600 milliamps. Oh, so can't really even supply less than half its load, let alone the full thing. So let's wind it right up to 1.3 amps and just see what it does to the voltage. You can see the voltage slowly creeping up there, um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not happy. So let's wind that right up to 1.3. And yeah, so 12 and going steadily up, and this is probably why it works sometimes and not others, because I guess once it's kind of crept up to that 19, maybe the cap's warmed up or something like that. Um, that's why the monitor sometimes work and, um, works, and I'm guessing it kind of gets it close enough to its working voltage to, to keep the monitor running. So the next thing we really need to do is take this thing apart and check out the cap. Now the fun bit with these things is getting the bloody things apart. Sometimes you can wedge kind of a very thin screwdriver in there and just kind of crack it open. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I don't know if I've got anything I can I can kind of wedge in there. There we go. And that is 
that is out straight away. I think we can see what's going on with that component there. Just to bring it up a little bit. Well bursty. So yeah, we'll measure that in just a sec and uh, compare it with its marked value. That's better. Look at that lovely lead-free solder. Ugh. Garbage. There we go. So that is removed. And it is a, what's it going to be like a 25 volt? What is that a 680, 25 volt? 680 microfarad. 25 volt that kind of makes sense so let's go ahead and test that and see what it's actually reading as and let's see what this comes up as it's taking a while there we go 182 microfarads with a 1.4 ohm ESR which is not great so now I've got to find something of that size and get it replaced. I'm going to just use a little bit of braid just to remove the solder that's still left on those pads there. Bought some more braid recently so living the braid dream. So all we're going to just do is hold that on there Put that on top and let it wick that evil solder away. That looks good. Excellent. Right. I'm going to go and find a cap. And here we have its replacement. 680 microfarads, 25 volts, brand new. That will do very, very nicely. Let's put this back in and the negative. I don't know if you can just, just about see there. The negative is where the cross hatched pattern is. That's where the negative on the cap needs to go. So we're going to put that in there and that on there. Push it down, solder it on. There we go, pin one done. Pin two, that's it. That is done, let's trim that down. And I'm gonna put it back together and then uh, run it on the DC load again. Right, I'm just gonna very, just lightly tape this back together. Don't feel like getting electrocuted today. So uh, yeah, just lightly tape it together. And just give it a bit of a test. Okay, so initially we're getting our 19 volts output uh, at 100 milliamps. Let's whack that up to 600, where it massively fell out of regulation before. 18.8, mm, okay, not too bad. The monitor won't actually run off 19 volts it will take that 19 volts in and just step it down to something more useful so as long as it's in you know a reasonable ballpark you know a couple of volts uh, lower would be absolutely fine for that sort of application so let's just crank it up to 1.3 amps um, we're at 18.44 volts which should be absolutely fine Obviously, it's a far cry from the 12 it was dropping to before, and it's actually staying reasonably in regulation. So now I guess the only thing to do is actually just to just to glue it back together and go and plug it into the monitor. So if you do have a monitor which uses one of these cheap and cheerful plug packs, and it's been misbehaving recently, it's definitely worth just cracking the thing open and 
just testing that capacitor both visually and uh, you know with a multimeter or yeah, you know tester like I have uh, that are available for about a tenner on Amazon. Definitely worth testing it. Definitely worth replacing it. Literally costs about fifty p to fix it. Got to be worth doing. Save something from from landfill. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye bye.